This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 907 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you, one day at a time. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Horses should learn to stretch down and out. It's good for them. But are there times when horses shouldn't be allowed to stretch? Today, Dressage Radio Show co-hosts Reese Kofler stanfield and Phil Parks answer a listener question about when horses should stretch. And we'll get right to it after this message from EquestrianCollections.com. Hi, Glenn here from the Horse Radio Network, and I'm with Debbie from Equestrian Collections with this week's Product of the Week, and I can speak to this one, Debbie. Hi. This week, Glenn, we're featuring the Noble Equine Ringside Pack. The reason we picked this is because this is not just your everyday backpack. I know when you go to ringside, you're always, I don't care how good your pack is, things are falling everywhere. This thing has room for everything from your helmet to your hoof pick. And I know that you've used this in the past and just love it. Yeah, I got one about five months ago, and, and I actually use it as my briefcase now, too. Now, this thing will fit a helmet, which it has a compartment on the outside of the backpack that will fit and, well, we've stuffed a couple different helmets in, and they fit just fine. So it fits your helmet. It has a whip holder. It has about a million pockets. And I have actually replaced my briefcase now, and I use this to travel on airplanes. And everywhere I go, I put my computer in it because it has every pocket in just the right place that I need. It is perfect that way. Plus, the whole, the shoulder straps are are perfect the way they fit. You know how some backpacks just dig into you? Yeah. You don't yeah. care how much weight you put in this one. You're not going to have that problem with these. These shoulder straps are made beautifully. I love this pack. And, and, you know, I think another really cool little feature is the inside is gold. So you can find things. Yes. Which is That's another true. thing. When you're ringside, you know, it's all, everybody's all nervous and looking for stuff and you can't find something. It's right there. It's so easy. So this is, this is a must have for everybody, not just the show mom, but um, the person who's on an airplane, right? Right. Exactly. You know, th- it's a little bit more expensive than the packs you're going to find at, let's say, Walmart. But this oh, well, yeah. is quality. The stuff, the, the material it's made out is super tough. You could throw it on a plane and not have to worry about that. This is, and what other pack are you going to find that has a place for a helmet? It actually is made for a helmet and also a whip holder. You're not going to find one. <laughs> nope, nope. This is unique. And we, you can get this from us at equestriancollections.com. It makes a great present. Perfect for the holidays. Absolutely perfect. And you can fill it with full, full of goodies, too, as a gift. <laughs> As long as you get them from EquestrianCollections.com. <laughs> so, like I said, we have a, uh, an email from a listener uh, for our trainer tip question. Um, I guess we'll just get right to it. What do you think, Reese? Yeah, super. Let's go. All right. It <laughs> says, I have a six-year-old off-the-track thoroughbred mare who came off the track three years ago and then when was in a vet school study. So she's really just beginning her sport ed- sport horse education. I'm planning to bring her along as a jumper, but at the moment we're very much focusing on the basics of flat work, which we love, right, Reese? Uh, that's us. Every, that's everybody needs a little in. flat work, right? Yeah, that's where we come in. <laughs> but she says they're only about 60 days in. The, her question is about how she prefers to carry herself. She says that the horse loves to stretch her nose on the ground in the walk and trot. Uh, when she does so, she is relaxed and comfortable, and her stride improves. However, sometimes she has to stretch, stretch at odd times. She's, um, this listener is getting conflicting advice on, on this problem. Uh, some people, including jumper and dressage trainers, say to let her stretch any time that she wants um, because it's good for her top line and shows she relaxed. Others say that she should not be allowed to stretch um, only when she gives, the rider gives permission. Um, She tried that and found that she asked to stretch and isn't allowed to. She kind of curls behind the bed, which, you know, isn't good either. Um, Right. So she asked for Reese and I's thoughts on this. I guess more more information uh, is better. Um, 
And the other thing about this email is that she actually sent us a little video, which is uh, helpful for us to Super to look at the problem. Um, it's not so helpful, you know, in a radio format, but uh, um, you know, maybe we can talk about you know how the horse went a little bit, Reese, and then what you think, and and uh, sure. go from there for our trainer tip. Yeah, no, that that would be great. And and this is a problem. You know, we get a lot of off the track thoroughbreds, obviously here in Lexington in Lexington area. That's a, a huge population of horses that I work with, um, here. And, and we, uh, if you ever want, you can, or need to find a relatively inexpensive horse, we usually have them here because of that, because of the racetrack and people want to rehome them. And a lot of my off the track thoroughbreds are venters. Um, so they're coming to me already, maybe not with as much enthusiasm about the dressage phase as I would have. Um, but that's what they're coming for. So uh, this horse was a pretty typical, um, racehorse type or, or off the track thoroughbred, you know, she didn't look too tense in the video, but she just wasn't connected. And, you know, that is an issue with racehorses because they're taught, you know, when you have connection with a racehorse, they run. <laughs> so right. sometimes so when you take up a little bit of that contact, uh-huh. they think, okay, let's go faster and faster and faster. So it can create a lot of tension. Right, exactly. And and that was kind of what was happening with this horse. And she also in the video and, and again it was it was a it was a clip, so it was hard to kind of uh see but she wasn't she wasn't reaching that well for the connection. And that was a big issue for this horse. She didn't want to I didn't really see in the clip much stretching at all. Did you, Philip? I mean it seemed like that the horse was stretching at um at a particular time that you know at particular locations and then other times not really stretching mm-hmm. so i mean there I th- I, there was stretch there but it was definitely not consistent enough to mm-hmm. say that this horse is using the stretch as a as a connection tool um i think it was you know what i would say was a little bit of a an evasive stretch i mean definitely mm-hmm. you know the nose down to the buckle and and really you know kind of long and low but it it seemed to me like the rider didn't have much control when the horse was stretching or really how, right? Because I, I think, yes. you know, in stretching, you want to be able to create different degrees of stretch, right? And it right. seems for this horse, um, kind of an all or nothing uh, right. situation. And, and I, I think that's, that's a bit of an issue. That's a bit of a problem. Yeah, and I think that's probably why she's getting conflicting responses. A well, let her stretch, no, no, let her stretch. And I kind of liked what you said about the consistency. I want to see, it, see the mare be consistent in general. You know, that was, she was sort of bouncing all over the connection. Yeah, it was and that, a little bit more than a little bit less, you know, just, yeah. or, and, and some nothing at all. And so, you know, so, um, and that again, is a like problem. the rider has That's not a, typical, a lot of control about, right. you know, where the horse is placing herself. So, yeah. So, you know, Philip, what would you, what would be your kind of way of dealing with that in the connection with that issue? Um, I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, green horse. So, yes. You know, you, it's very tricky to kind of, you got to kind of try and figure out what's the best way to approach the problem rather than a horse that's, you know, already kind of trained. And um, because what you don't want to create is a lot of more attention. I think the horse is going well for for her education. You know, uh, the rhythm was okay and everything, you know, the yes. horse seemed happy to be working. And, yep. and so I think as you, um, as you want to develop this horse, one thing that I might try right away is... Um, is putting the horse on the lunge line with some not too tight side reins, but some side reins. Yeah, yeah. That gives, some, that gives uh, yeah. a horse an idea of um, you know a consistent contact, or at least the the bit being in a certain place that that mm-hmm. you are not interfering with with a rider, and that just things are you know pretty simple. As back to basics a little bit, as simple as possible. Here's the bit, you know. Here's a little bit of contact. Um, you know what's and it, that that's an, a kind of an evaluation tool and kind of a, a starting point for. Almost every horse. I think with the the thoroughbreds off the track, they know how to be ridden a lot of times, and they know a little right. bit about the bit and about, about steering. I like to just bring them back, you know, right to as if they hadn't been back before, and just play with a few things that I would with a very green two or three year old, just to kind of see where you're at and and how they're going to react to the the side reins and a little bit of contact, and like I said, bring it right back to basics. So I think, um, you know, that's that's a starting point. And then the, yes. the the next thing, you know, the next step to that is just as, as you as you get off the the lunge line and you introduce the rider, that the rider's um, the rider becomes very consistent, kind of very similar to the side rein, you know, not too tight with the contact, but real 
consistency so the horse knows where the rider's at. I mean, if the horse is trying to stretch and the rider throws away the reins and then the horse is throwing the head up and then the rider's got to gather them back up, that creates not a super consistent idea and picture for the horse. And then basically the horse just is doing what, it's want, what it wants to do and, and the rider is just um, a passenger. So I think right. that's, that's a starting point. Um, you know, by using these tools to kind of evaluate what's going on, I'd have to kind of go from there with the training. But uh, yeah, no, I think that's a really, I think that that's what you do. And, and I think it's interesting because when my students sometimes say, well, how, how do you come up with the process of, of working with that horse? Well, the way you just did it is what trainers do. You know, we want to be able to go back and say, okay, yes, this horse was ridden, but he was ridden for a very different purpose uh, as a racehorse. And then it was at vet school. And, you know, I mean, this horse had kind of a history. So I think you have to go back and you and the horse need to speak the same language. So I liked how you said, okay, we're going to go back and we're going to lunge the horse. We're going to start from the beginning and teach the horse like they don't know anything. And then you also started using the scale of training with relaxa- rhythm, then relaxation and connection. Those are your, your, your bottom part of that pyramid and scale of training. And that's how trainers go about training because that's the systematic approach. And I think sometimes you get caught up in, oh, he, you know, my trainer said he should stretch and he should stretch. And then why isn't he stretching? And, but he's not connection and there's no rhythm. There's no relaxation. So I think that that's a way to go back and figure out where your hole is and how you can train your horse. So I think that 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 would be where I would go back with this horse Um, to kind of bring it back to to the stretching. um, and, And this is great. This is just something to remember about the dressage radio show is you can search on our website and see if there have been any um topics that have been discussed like yeah they've been the covered in the gr- previous show there's i mean this is episode 238 so there's 237 right. um shows that may have covered a similar topic you can just search right. for a keyword or um and so we 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 actually had a show it was it yes, last we year did. we Maybe did it was the, with the episode sure number. Yeah, it was with Tammy Bates um, from North Carolina, and it was uh, November 29th, 2012, and it was episode 183. And she did a great topic discussion. That was our question was she was coming from a judge's perspective on the stretchy circle and what she looked for. And, and, and it was a, I remembered the interview. I said, oh, Philip, we've got to mention this because yeah. – it was a really good interview. It was. It really described the stretch circle in a, in a really good way, um, and we and had a whole how the horse should stretch mm-hmm. and and yeah. uh, I, I think in this case it's just that the rider has to dictate the stretch and don't let the horse right. train train you right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think mean, there's definitely quality in this horse's stretch, and it's going to come along and it's going to be great. But it can't be a horse's decision to do it now and not do it there, and right. uh, and it it becomes a little bit you know confusing. And, and obviously, this rider is uh, you know having a little bit of um, conflicting advice and, and and stuff. So right. Um, yeah, but I think I that's, mean, I think it's, that's it's, a good tip. I think yeah. I yeah. think Reese, you covered all you know all the great points about about this, and uh, and obviously you know you come up with a game plan if it if it's not working or you you have to kind of modify that game plan without mm-hmm. getting away from the pyramid right and just saying right. okay exactly rhythm, rhythm relaxation and, and yeah uh, that's what it's there for for sure yeah, yeah you know? so well great well philip that was awesome and, and i hope that everybody over the holidays if you have any extra time and and you want to kind of jump on the website and see if there are any um questions um you know that can be answered through the through the other episodes we've had or we always like listener questions it really we enjoy getting together philip and i spend a little time before the show and go through them and and uh we're just we're, we're total geeks that way we love yeah. and the, video, and the videos you know the you know, yeah. to send a video is no problem we can review mm-hmm. it and and try our best to describe you know what's going on in the video and and uh you know i'm sure if there's one rider having a problem there's probably two or three thousand others yeah, having the exactly. same problem you know well that pretty much takes care of it you can also find lots more tips on topics ranging from barn care to websites for horse people on horsetipdaily.com just look for the topics drop down menu on the left And you can listen to the Dressage Radio Show at dressageradio.com, where you can get all dressage geeky with Philip and Reese and enjoy Fleeceworks Trainer Tip of the Week in its natural environment. And you can have all of the Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go 
with our free app for iPhone and Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. Download it today. It's free and easy. And don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. Today's podcast has been brought to you by EquestrianCollections.com. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.